What's up, y'all? Lockout men in the truck out here in Texas again. Yo, y'all hear that music? It's like every time I'm doing one of these interviews, man. I'm in Texas. I don't know. I probably might be somewhere else. But, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed the last uh, interview that I had with Miss Concrete Jungle. Thank you for joining me, uh, Miss Concrete Jungle. Today, I have somebody special. Yes, sir. I have met this young lady in the Zello channel. I'm not on Zello no more, but, you know, that's a whole nother story. But uh, I met this young lady in the Zello channel. She has uh, she been in the trucking game for about a good minute. A good minute. She started at uh, Averitt, I believe, as a recruiter. And now she's back at Averitt, but at the sister company. We'll let her tell, tell where she's at. Um, doing the damn thing. So I would like for you guys to put your hands together, please. For Miss Nikki Pointer. What's going on, lady? How you feel today? I'm good. How are you? I am good. I am good. So for let me uh let me bring this up right quick. Cause you know we all doing this on the fly, right? <laughs> right. I should get my own bio. You say you should get your <laughs> you say you should get your own what now? I said I should give my own bio. Oh, well, for the people that don't know who you are, why don't you go ahead and knock it out for me? Well, I have been driving about 10 years. Um, I have my studio for 10 years. I started at U.S. Express and did about a four-year degree with them, almost five, and then I went to Avery. I drove and I was a recruiter. Right. And, um, now I am um, happy at First Fleet. Okay, so First Fleet, that's uh, that's a sister, that's the uh, sister company of Avery, right? Um, they their own company. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, of course, some kind of affiliation. I'll just leave it at that, but they're their own individual company. Okay, okay. I am trying to. I am trying real hard. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I am trying real hard to to get my stuff together. Sorry for not having my stuff together, y'all. But you know, you know how it is when 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 a new when a new guy coming in doing something different. You know what I'm saying? All right, so uh, Nikki, you said you started off at uh, at US Express. Did you did you get your CDLs through them, or did you have your CDLs already? Oh no, I went to Charter School to get my CDLs. How was your How was your experience there, and and was that a deciding factor of going to school uh, before you uh, went to you know to get your license that way versus going to a to a company? Well, I definitely didn't want it. I didn't want to be in a contract, you know, going to a company and having to be under contract with them. Um, at the time, companies were basically holding your information so you couldn't leave them and things like that. So I didn't want to be trapped in the company. I wanted to be free to make my decision where I wanted to go. Okay, okay. You want, Let me ask you something. Do you, you have your headset on? my air no yo do you have your do you have your uh i call i call it the trucker's headset but it's the bluetooth do you do you have that on no oh okay sound like you got me on speaker i do oh okay okay yeah you you might want to you you might want to take me off a speaker because i'm hearing your feedback Okay, so is that better? Yeah, that's a lot better. That is a lot better. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay, hold on, wait, quick. I know y'all, y'all. I'm gonna edit all this this uh, pause out so y'all don't have to worry about all that. All right, so Nikki, man, <laughs> tell me, 
tell me tell me about the time where you had no idea what you were what you were doing before you got into trucking or did you thought that you know what what would you what was your thoughts was at the time when you decided to get into trucking um i guess i wanted to get into trucking a while ago and then like many years ago but um some guys were telling me it's not very women friendly like oh there's you know blah 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 a whole bunch of negativity so i i held off on it Mm -hmm. and then being in event planning and things like that i knew that transportation was a big a big deal you know something i had to outsource and and i knew it was a field that i wanted to get into so that's when i went to, to pursue my cdl okay so what made you was so after you left uh u.s express who did you go to who, who did you go to after it i went to april now from what i understand you 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 didn't drive for them what what did you what did you do when you was with avery well yes i i came on as a driver and they were really um, great in that Avid actually looks at your application as an individual. So they saw um, my previous like management and um, oh, you know owning my event planning business and things like that. So they offered me a corporate position. At the time, I didn't want it. A few months later, um, a HR recruiting position became available, and I got it. So I got um, into HR as a recruiter, but. They also allow me to keep my CDL active by driving, like on weekends and things like that. Sometimes, mm-hmm. so that was great. So with uh, with you doing recruiting now, explain. I'm glad I got somebody on that that has some recruiting background. So for the new drivers that's coming in, let them know how the recruiting aspect from your end was all, was all about. Well, the the general, every company has um, different policies and onboarding processes. But generally, um, companies, you know, depending on um, their hiring uh, rules and regulations, they look at your DAC report, they look at your accident. Um, that's all important. You want to make sure that you're, you're when you're getting into the game, you're getting into a, a, a good company, a reputable company, because other companies look at your preventables. You know, when you go out with a trainer, make sure you're going with a company that has um, a good reputation of mm-hmm. training well and things like that. You don't want to go with a company that your trainer is sleeping because you're not really going to learn a lot. Right. Um, companies, um, I don't know. I've seen companies hire you. With, the ones that hire you in a day or so, I don't think they're all that great because that means when you get to their orientation, they start doing all your paperwork. And then if they find something they don't want, guess what? They give you a bus ticket right back home. Okay. Now, for every driver that you have recruited, did you get a did you get a bump up or did you get a bonus for that, or was you just one of those type of recruiters that's that's tell it like it is and just bring them in on a you know bring them in and just get paid for bringing them in? That's another kind of general question. So depending on the company that you work for, um, good thing about Avery was our incentives were really low, but we were salary based. So we are we didn't have we our mission wasn't to get as many people as we can the best way we can by any means necessary. That means lying. Um, that's one of the things that I liked about the company. They were very transparent. They wanted you to tell the truth. There was a few other companies out there that was like that. Um, some companies are strictly their recruiters are for the most part commission based, so they're sal- so they they're not on salary. They may be on hourly or or a small salary, but their commission is really large. Okay. So they they basically tell you whatever it takes to get you through the door, so they can make you know put put food on the table. Okay. Um, but there were companies that that are like Avery that, um, yeah, they pay their recruiters well, so they didn't have to lie to you. Okay, so where who you um so between Avery and where you at now? What was your experience at uh, other companies? What was what was the other companies you uh, drove for? Um, so my experience have been totally different. I do think that 
<clears throat> U.S. Express. I've always felt like U.S. Express had a pretty good beginner program. Mm -hmm. um, they used to allow their trainers to team with you after so many hours. I'm not sure what it, what it is now, but that's, that's good. Like, you have to get so many hours with your trainer, and then they can go to sleep. Um, what I like about Avery's um, training position as far as students go is they don't allow their trainers to sleep at all. So while you're in training, that trainer is awake, you know, and helping you and things like that. Oh. Um, where I'm at now, first, please, you have to have experience before you come over, so it's a little bit different. Um, I've been here for a while. I kind of totally love it so far, so. Okay. So in between Averitt <laughs> and where you at now, what was your experience with the other companies before you got with First Fleet? Between Averitt yes. and First Fleet. Yes. Who have you what other trucking companies have you worked for? US Express. Okay. And, and I've did some drive away. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you're referring to my drive away experience, I've also done drive away. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. The the experience with them and the experience with the other trucking company as well, right? You you have worked. For, oh yeah. Okay. So uh, yes. This, yeah. This year I did when I um I you I forgot I got it. I did yeah. like RTI. Yes. There you go. How was your yes. experience? How was yes. your experience with RT <laughs> with RTI? I'm I'm very interested in in your experience with them. And I gave Mercer a try as well. I oh. went crazy for a few months. Okay, okay. So, oh, uh, so with Mercer, what what was your experience with them? Uh, I actually I really did like Mercer. Um, if you have your own truck, Mercer, in my opinion, is one of the greatest companies. From my experience, okay, they really, you know, get to know their drivers. They have a lot of benefits and perks that they kind of throw in there that are nice. Um, but what happened was I was working um, because I don't have my own truck, and right. so I was working. I was working for a, um, a like a contractor, mm -hmm. um, and you know that was okay. <laughs> but I love Mercer okay. Um You do get a load board. You also get someone that plans your loads. Well, they work with you like a dispatcher, so you can go on the load board and find your own loads or your dispatcher. You know, they're always looking and helping you find it as well. So I kind of really like that. So with uh, with with Mercer, you was able, even though you was driving for an owner op, you were still able to uh, pick your own loads? Yes. Depending on the owner operator that you work for, what happens is when you go to Mercer and you don't have your own truck, they have um, what's called a contractor list. Mm -hmm. that, and the, the list, um, it like updates every week or two of who's looking for drivers. Right. And then depending on that, con some contractors pick loads for their drivers. Other ones give you the reins and let you pick your own loads. Okay. So being, uh, so that was... That was still well wait. So you you was driving for owner op, but you had to go through Mercer? How did that work out? Right, because Mercer is only owner operators. But they let owner operators put a lot of trucks. Like the the people that I was driving for through them, they had like forty something, fifty something trucks on with Mercer. Okay. So yeah, you can have a fleet at, at Mercer. So okay, so I'm still trying to, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out because you know, this first time I'm hearing about all this, just like you guys. So Mercer, okay, so so, so the owner operators is like working off of Mercer's uh, authority while I'm I'm still. Y'all gotta y'all gotta bear with me because I am a little bit confused on on how on how the process with Mercer works. So you got you didn't get paid by Mercer. You you got paid by the owner operator that owned it, that truck, right? Right. The, the fleet that I was under the contract. So yes. Okay. So well, but you had to 
you had to go through the hiring practice with Mercer, though. Right. So it, so for the most part, anytime, anytime a company mm-hmm. lets, lets owner operators bring on a fleet to their company, whatever driver they have, they have to go through the regular hiring process for that company. You can't just say, um, you know, this is company XYZ. And I'm bringing on a driver, and they say, okay, no, you have to go through the same hiring process and stipulations and everything as their drivers do. Right. Same qualifications, everything. Okay, 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 okay. Well, yeah, that's a little a little confusing. You know, I was, woo, out there. All right, so at the end of, at the, end of the day, you decide to uh, jump ship from Mercer. Uh was there any particular reason uh, why, or you just you know you just felt that Mercer wasn't wasn't right for you? I felt that Mercer was great, but I I felt that Mercer is great for in my particular instance on operators. Um, it was a few people that had some trust that I would have been in, that interested in maybe running for them, but if you think about it, um. If you run for somebody else, you have to split the profits, of course, because they have to make profits from you using their truck. Mm-hmm. And so um, I felt like if I would have had my own truck, I would have loved to still have been at Mercer. Okay, okay. So check this out. Check this out. I found the video. Yeah, I found Uh-oh. the vi- I found the video from uh, Even when you're in training, from uh, you're Nikki to Pointer. This is her right here. Check it out. Look at that! Trying, try, trying, trying to sell U.S. Express <laughs> over here. <laughs> hey, hey, that was my first dinner recruiting when I got in the trucking game. I, I probably got um ten thousand plus in referral bonuses that year off of that video. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. It changed the game. Okay. Okay. So uh, the the other the other company that you drove for it wasn't a trucking company. It was more of a hot shot type of company. You you want to you want to elaborate on that? Okay. So um, I I currently um and am active, but um, well I'm gonna say I'm active on the boards, but not active. But anyway, with Drive Away, mm-hmm. and so those are basically companies that you drive away equipment. So I, you know, do a vehicles, personal vehicles, company vehicles, trucks, garbage trucks, dump trucks, <laughs> pretty much you name it. Anything that has at least four wheels, I have driven it away. RVs, motor, you know, coaches and motor homes, things like that. Okay. Um, AC wheelers, tractor trailers, car haulers. So with that, with that type of, with that type of uh, field job field right there is that you would take the equipment down and you would like find something else on the low board that'll bring you back up or would you take uh, an airplane or a bus back to your home base how how that work on the on the return well my advice to someone who is going into drive away is to get a few of them under your belt. At least two or three. Mm-hmm. You know, get contracted with at least two or three. That way you have options. So when you get to a certain, when you deliver to a certain, if you're picking up Mississippi and it's going to Texas, when you get to Texas, you can look on the low board and all three companies and try to find something to keep you moving because it's kind of up to you. You're a contractor, 1099. So once you deliver, they're like, okay, you know, it's up to you if you want another load or if you're in an area. You may have to take a bus, train, plane to get to another location or to get back home because the the expenses are totally on you. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That is what's up. 
So drive away. Would you would you suggest uh, would you suggest a, a new jack to to get into drive away or or would you suggest a new jack to get into into the uh, actual game? Um, I would. It would depend. So if you have if you are currently or new into the game and you have money saved up or a business account or something like that, drive away may be fun. Or if you just need a break from the game, drive away is great. But make sure you have a little nest egg because, like I said, the expenses are totally on you. Now, the turnaround time is good as far as pay goes. Most driveway companies, you know, they pay you within 24 to 48 hours. Okay, okay. Um, around 72 is the longest I've seen. But anyway, uh, well, I mean 36. Um, so if you have a little nest egg, drive away is good and it's fun. But it is actually it, it's expensive. <laughs> okay. It's expensive, and you have to learn the low board. So if you're new to it, or you're an experienced driver, it's totally different than driving a truck. Right? right. It's totally different. So being that you got into the trucking game, how how long you been uh how long you been a driver? Um, I've been a driver since '09. Oh, nah. Okay, so so you got uh you got some years under your belt. Okay, okay. 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 So shout out to the Beavers with years under their belt. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. So being a female driver out here with that many years under your belt, what uh what did you have to overcome out here? Um. <clears throat> I would say I had to overcome people saying that I couldn't do it, I wouldn't last, that it wasn't an industry that was built for women. And on the contrary, I think that I've had a pretty good experience for the most part um, as a woman. I think people are very helpful for the most part. People are very helpful and my experience overall has been wonderful. Um, but safety first, you know, okay. I would, you know, definitely. Now, as a as a, tell you know, people to be safe, men and women out here. Now, as a female driver, since you mentioned uh, since you mentioned safety, as a female driver, what's some of the advice that you can give some of these new females out here in pertaining to safety? The legal advice that I would give them is: we're allowed to carry a four-inch knife, so make sure that you do. Um, I think pepper spray is legal. Make sure you keep some of that. Uh, wash spray is actually really good and it shoots far. Sounds weird. Keep that in your truck as well. I'm a driver who chains her doors. Everybody doesn't say, you know, they love that concept. But um, I also know that for every truck model that's made, companies get to it. It's so, only so many keys that are given. So I don't, it's not the hardest thing to break in a truck. So when I'm asleep, I like to make sure that I'm sleeping well so I can do a good job. I, you know, put my seatbelt around my doors, I chain my doors, whatever, while I'm asleep. Um, try to park in well-lit areas. Let's see. I don't know, so much. Just, you know, be be, be um, aware of your surroundings. Okay. Hold and on. if you see other drive, you know, other female drivers, kind of reach out to them, you know, especially if you feel, you know, unsafe or... Um, or store personnel even, you know, and let them know if you see things that are suspicious. Okay, that's what's up. That's some good advice. If it wasn't for the money, all right, so if money wasn't an option, what would you be doing? If money wasn't an option in yes. life? Yeah, no, 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 no. If, if Because the reason why we get into this trucking game is definitely for the money. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, can, I I can't see no other reason why we get in the, <laughs> why we get in this game, why we sacrifice our lives to get for for this if it wasn't for the money. So, if it wasn't for the money, what would you actually be doing? Um <clears throat> I would be event planning. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Which I'm I'm going back into doing next year, but <laughs> So you say so you say you're transportation gonna... is great. It's a it's a means to my 
to my continuance. <laughs> so you say, yeah, you're going to try and open up that door again. That's what's up. <laughs> okay. That so, and recruiting. I love it. So would you, drivers is great. So if, if you decide to uh, jump out of the truck, and would you consider uh, recruiting for First Fleet? Um, I I kind of requested them already. Okay. So we've had conversation, <laughs> but um, as far as being in a truck, I talk to drivers every day. We have a excellent, um, basically um, guaranteed pay over here, and we have some other accounts and things like that. So as a company and a culture, I like it. So I've already, you know, basically recruited for them. Okay, okay. So what keeps you motivated in, in this trucking game? What, what what keeps you going? Probably family. Uh, my mother, my daughter. Okay. You know, that keeps me going. All right. So with, uh, with, with, with that said, with trucking being so stressful, man, because, you know, we, we, our sleep patterns is off, you know, mm-hmm. a whole, whole bunch of stuff, you know, rules, regulations, the drive itself is stressful. How do you, uh, how, how, how do you rest? How, how do you, uh, take care of yourself with, with all this stress? Um, stress is stress attacks you mentally, physically, emotionally. So what I try to do is out here I try to keep my mind um, very drama free, mm-hmm. and I try to focus on things. Um, I listen to gospel music to keep me grounded. When I, at nighttime to wind down, I listen to jazz. You know things that relax your mind and your body. Is is you know very necessary. I listen to a lot of books, a lot of audio books while I drive, and podcasts and things like that. So you know you have to keep your mind busy and you have to keep your sanity because you have um, most most of us we have other people that are depending on us. So we can't be out here going crazy, you know, and okay. letting the world. We literally you know cross many state lines That's in a, in a week's time. We cross multiple state lines, multiple. Um, driving conditions, weather conditions. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just try to keep my mind right. Okay. So, uh, Nikki, man, you, I, man, it's, it's just, it's just so much, so much, so little time. Yo, you, have, you have, uh, lockout. you have any, you have any, uh, oh, so- what's your name again? Oh, lockout. <laughs> you know what i i just talked to uh prince i i had a conversation with uh with him shout out to prince star and uh i came across the picture when we was going over you know going over the pictures and everything and i already said that if you hear when you see the video or hear the podcast you're gonna be mad at me because i forgot your name for a hot minute <laughs> so what's your uh, what's your social media, right quick? Where where they where they can find you at? Um, Facebook. I'm Nikki Pointer. All right. So Pretty let me. Simple. So Nikki let me. Pointer. Let me bring. Let me bring up your Facebook right quick. Hey. Okay. All right. We've been Facebook friends for a little bit. Yeah, we have been. We have been. There's some uh, pictures of you, right quick. Of uh from uh from Facebook right quick. Oh, you got a picture of uh now see now I can't read uh Diva Trucker. Uh Trucker Diva. Diva the the Diva. I, I forgot her name too. But. I got a picture with you. We we went to I visited your city and we went to some place that is known in your city, like restaurant or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Al's. Is that is that in here? I don't. Let me see. I thought. Yeah, that's there. Let me see. Cool. Is that in there? That wait, wait. I'm trying to. I like when people, you know, show me their cities and take me someplace I can't go. You know, just as not a yeah. chain regular stuff we're used to eating on the road yeah here here you go there's there's a picture of me and you when uh when you was at your birthday party that's that's where we was at 
uh pictures of uh pictures of your birthday party the birthday party jam uh <laughs> there's uh there's another picture of me and you right there i think that was the big al's picture right there yeah that was the big okay. al's picture right there so yeah shout yeah, out right to there. big al's the the food was good yeah so that was a good choice a little gem in the city yeah so definitely definitely so let me see. Do I? Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. So about trucking, what do you what do you think? What do you think that most people don't appreciate about trucking? Most people don't appreciate truck drivers in general. <clears throat> so they forget that we're the Santa Claus. We are Santa Claus, Mr. Mm -hmm. and Mrs. Claus. They forget that. Mm -hmm. And you know, if it wasn't for us. Like they would basically have if well we've had this conversation a lot of times I'm I'm very passionate about the fact that if truckers stopped rolling for a week people would be upset and they would feel that impact you know right they they take us for granted they cut us off you know that's somebody's medicine in the back of our truck you know that's some baby diapers or food that's got to go on people's counters or whatever you know what I mean on the tables or supplies or whatever you know they just take us for granted in general. Definitely, definitely. All right, Nikki, what well, hey, listen, this has been a hot conversation and it was good getting back and hollering at you right quick, man. Thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Uh what do you anything for Mr. Lockout. Oh, well, thank you, thank you. What do you what do you think? Um what do you think what is what is the vision for you all together? What's what's uh you know what? What is what is the vision for you all together for this trucking, for your uh, event planning? What what is what is the outlook for you? Oh, I'll definitely be um, more active in, in event planning next year. Also, opening up my own recruiting firm. I, you know, I like putting people with good companies. Like you know, um, that's a very important. Too many recruiters and companies lie to you to get you there, and it's not what it seems. So I want to be able to represent good quality companies with good quality drivers and, you know, make that connection. Tenfold on that. Well, Nikki, again, like I said, thank you very much for joining me on here. Guys, if you want to get a hold of Miss Nikki Pointer, y'all can check her out on her Facebook right quick at Nikki Pointer. Uh, I do believe she has an Instagram. Do you? Let's yeah, see. Godiva 100. It is, it is what now? Godiva 100. Oh, okay. Here we go. Yeah, I just brought it up. Godiva 100. Yeah, she got some, uh, not that many pictures on here. She got on her Facebook, though. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I'll have to update it. I'm work I'll work on that. Thanks for homework lockout. Ah, uh, you yeah, uh, that's what's up. All right, guys. So you guys if you guys like content like this, yo, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell on the way out the door so you can get more content like this. Yo, don't forget to go and check out the podcast, which is lockout men at anchor.fm. I said it backwards, so it's anchor dot fm backslash lockout men make sure y'all go and check out the podcast until then i want to thank miss nikki pointer for coming on to the show and chopping it up with me for a little bit and i guess i i guess i will get back at you guys in another segment peace